Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I am Dennis Weiner. It's W-E-I-N-E-R. I'm the Chief of Police here in the City of Columbus. And we're here today about the homicide that happened yesterday morning uh, in downtown Columbus. Uh, one thing that I don't want anybody to forget to overlook is that there's a family grieving, that the loss of life due to gun violence, the unnecessary loss of life due to gun violence, I don't think sets well with any of us. So we need to keep that family in their thoughts and in our prayers. They're going through a very rough time now. And uh, you know, hopefully through the hard work that everybody did, we can bring some degree of closure to them. However, you can never obviously replace a family member. So what my plan is today, I'll introduce the others. What I'm going to do is I will be reading from the press release that I provided you, uh, as well as the booking photo. Uh, we will, and I'm gonna go off script a little bit. There's a couple of, of notes that I wanna specifically add and some things that I think are worth sharing. Uh, we will open it up to very limited questions. Also understand that this isn't a, even though we have made an arrest, this is in a very preliminary phase. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work is going on today as we speak. Uh, by some of my staff and some later today. So this is far from being close per se, uh, but we are 100% comfortable that we have the right person in custody and is going to be held accountable. Uh, to my right here is Mayor Joe Hammer of the City of Columbus. And uh, to his right is De Detective Captain David Clark with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Sheriff's Office and their staff played a key role in helping us, as did all the other agencies. If you look at the bottom of the press release and see the, the volume of agencies that were involved in this, it is astounding. And we all came together very, very well and got to the conclusion that everybody was hoping for. So I'm gonna read from the release. Uh, we'll answer some questions that we can. Uh, it will be very limited. And then uh, I will let uh, Detective Clark, Detective Captain Clark and Mayor Hammer make a statement if they would like to, and then we'll call it a wraps, okay? All right, so I'm gonna read from this that you have in front of you. On July 4th, 2024, at 1.31 a.m., an officer with the Columbus Police Department was investigating what he heard and believed to be fireworks in the downtown area. Simultaneously, 911 calls were received at the dispatch center reporting a fight. Upon an officer's arrival, he located an adult male who had been shot. Life-saving measures were attempted by officers and emergency medical services paramedic staff. However, the victim was later, soon after, uh, pronounced deceased at Prairie Ridge Health here in Columbus. The victim is identified as Jose de Jesus Fuentes Hernandez, age 42, of Columbus. Additional investigation and review of various video camera footage provided by the community led us to identifying the suspect. A search warrant was issued and executed by the Columbia County ERT, which is an acronym for Emergency Response Team, at the suspect's Columbus residence. He was not there. Some items of evidence were recovered from the residence. We were able to identify a location in the city of Madison that we believe that the suspect was at. Assistance was requested from the Madison Police Department as well as the Wisconsin Department of Justice Criminal, uh, Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation, also known as DCI. A search warrant was issued and executed at the Madison location by the Madison Police Department Emergency Response Team. The suspect was taken into custody at 1.54 p.m. yesterday and is currently in the Columbia County Jail and was booked in on the charge of first degree intentional homicide. He is identified as Jonathan Javier Luna, age 22, also of Columbus. The suspect does have the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. The firearm believed to be involved was located within the suspect's path that we believed he fled from the shooting. At the scene, several spent shell casings were recovered Multiple defects and a shattered window uh, occurred at a business that was in front of where the shooting took place. A projectile, a bullet projectile was recovered from a vehicle parked approximately 100 feet down the street from where the actual shooting occurred. The help of the public 
was key to solving this case. A request through the media was issued for anyone in the downtown area into the southwest of the downtown that may have video footage, ring cameras, cameras on their businesses, anything of that nature to contact the Columbus Police Department. The response was very impressive and led to why we are here today. I don't know that if it was without that, we would be here today, in fact. The teamwork amongst the long list of agencies involved in this was seamless, absolutely seamless. I'm very proud of everybody. We're dealing with agencies in another county. Uh, we're dealing with agencies out of the city. Uh, it just, it, it could not have came together better. Uh, when I arrived, not that long after the shooting happened and we got preliminary information, I didn't know where this was going to go because the, the information was very limited. Uh, there were limited witnesses, uh, many people on scene after the shooting, but the information we had was very, very limited. Again, I will go back to the fact that the video provided by multiple sources were pivotal in this case. One thing that I do want to say that I am a bit disgusted with is the, Columbus, the Columbia County Emergency Response Team is a highly trained team of professionals. ERT is also an acronym formerly known, sometimes known as SWAT teams. Highly trained, heavily equipped. Uh, they went to serve the search warrant in an armored vehicle that many of you may have seen. Um, it is a very, very dangerous thing that they were doing, trying to take this subject into custody to protect this community and to hold someone accountable. One of the neighbors of the suspect, for some reason, felt the need to stream their actions live on Facebook. And the information that we have and observed is in fact that the suspect was watching it. So I hope that that person is proud of their moment of fame, but I am very unhappy with their actions that, that they seem to think was not a big deal. Again, that is a very dangerous event. We're going after someone who just killed someone who is most likely armed, and uh, fortunately the suspect was not home. Uh, had he been, we could be here about a secondary outcome that I don't really even want to talk about. So I understand the day of social media and people's rights and the First Amendment things and things of that nature, but I am just very, very disappointed in this person who, when we contacted him, didn't think it was a big deal. I disagree. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, again, I just want to summarize about the long list of agencies that were involved in this. Uh, I just want to highlight a few, and it doesn't mean they did more or less than anybody else. Uh, I got asked in a previous press release why the Marshall Police Department was involved. Uh, one of the issues that we were confronted with immediately was a language barrier. Uh, we put out requests for Columbia. Dane and Dodge Counties for someone who was fluent in Spanish. And the closest one was an on-duty Marshall police officer who responded here without hesitation and helped us substantially. Uh, additionally, the Wisconsin State Patrol uh, contacted me and wanted to know what we needed. They also sent a Spanish-speaking trooper that drove here from Richland Center to help us with that. And that was after he had just completed a 12-hour shift. So uh, the assistance that we got from all the agencies in this was very smooth and very impressive. Uh, it was a long day for my staff. Again, this, day, this press conference isn't about us. Uh, we're here in a way to honor someone who lost their life due to unnecessary violence. But with the 4th of July celebration going on here in Columbus and, and the parade that was to occur that day and go right through the crime scene, uh, my people were already on extended hours, extended shifts. Uh, we had staff that were here 24 plus hours straight. Went home and basically got home and turned around and came right back when the shooting happened. So I'm very proud of my staff. I'm proud of all the agencies that assisted. I also want to recognize Sheriff Roger Brander. Uh, shortly into this incident, I was contacted by him and he asked me what we needed. And I took advantage of that with a detective. Uh, eventually multiple detectives, and then eventually the emergency response team arrived. Uh, I also want to uh, compliment the media for their responsible reporting of this. 
and their interactions with me. For those of you that were here yesterday, you probably saw me at the crime scene pretty much for the duration. And, and I was very willing to speak to everybody and happy to do it because an informed public is a positive public. So I said what I, what I could, what I did, uh, and they treated me very well and didn't beat me up with questions that I, I couldn't give the, I can't answer that, I can't answer that. Um, they accepted my statements and I told them I would reach back out to them. Secondarily, yesterday when the emergency response team was arriving, they were staging on East West Harrison Street by the fire department uh, so that they could do a briefing and respond to the location uh, to arrest the suspect. Uh, one of the Madison media stations was uh, set up right on the corner and they were going to be doing some live streaming of the events here in Columbus. And uh, you can't miss a large armored vehicle pulling up uh, which hadn't arrived yet and I, and I politely asked, I, I informed them what was going on and I said could you please maybe just not show down the street or not show these vehicles because we certainly don't want potentially the sup suspect that may be seeing this know that we're coming for him. And uh, that was an absolute, oh absolutely, I, where, where would you like me to go? I will not show that, I will not show them staging. They were, they were going to be putting their gear on, there was an equipment trailer here already, deputies were responding and getting dressed with their tactical hard gear on and stuff like that. And that request to me, you know, reaffirmed the police media relationships. That was outstanding. And, and I, I probably shouldn't, but I will, I will recognize that that was channel 15. So I really appreciate that. Uh, it made it a lot easier for us. Um, just a couple other, other things I want to add is that uh, the shooting happened downtown. The information was that he ran south on Ludington Street, cut through the parking lot alley, which is almost across the street from the police department, and then traveled in a southwesterly direction along Dickinson Boulevard. And we reached out to multiple businesses about getting video from downtown, and we had an outstanding response. And again, that was key in helping identify uh, the suspect. Uh, one of the businesses I called who I believed was going to have the best video footage based on the information we had at the time, I called him at about 2.30 and he drove to town and came and, and went through his system and found some very helpful information. Other business owners we contacted during the day uh, came right down, gave us what they had, suggested other businesses that may have it. So again, I want to thank the, the business community for everything that was done here. It was phenomenal. This was a team effort. Uh, I want to say that this case was resolved with good old-fashioned police work. It was not a matter of we saw a video and, oh, we recognize that person as so-and-so, and we went and knocked on their door. Uh, essentially, at the onset of the case, we had nothing. Uh, we got good information from the public. One specific contact from the public uh, provided a nugget of information of something they saw that led us to the suspect. So again, uh, this is a team effort by everybody. While I wasn't planning on doing this, I do want to recognize uh, two specific people who were directly involved in this case from the get-go yesterday and worked tirelessly to get us here today. And they are present. They're sitting in the back row uh, by the window. On the left is Lieutenant Darrell Ward of the Columbus Police Department and Detective Courtney Fleischacker of the Columbia County Sheriff's Department. This was their mission yesterday and they accomplished it very well. Right. Uh, like I said, we will answer questions that we can understand. Again, <coughs> excuse me, that this is a very preliminary investigation and we are, there's a lot of boots on the ground doing things yet that come with a case of this, this magnitude uh, and there are things that I won't be able to answer but what, we can, what I can, you know, we will. And then if uh, Captain Clark would like to make a comment, and then I think we'll close out with the mayor would also like to make a statement as well. So I, I will take questions that any someone may have. Yes. As, excuse me, any indication as to uh, motive or how these two knew each other? That is one of the things that we are still investigating and we potentially may not have the answer on that. One of the people involved is deceased and the other person is in custody. Uh, we do plan on visiting him. He has not been interviewed. We do plan on uh, visiting him um, probably shortly after this press conference and seeing if we can get those answers. We're not sure if we will have them or not. Um, we don't, I, I don't have the answer for you. I'm not holding it back. I don't have the answer. Uh, then just to connect some dots, yep. you, uh, you 
serve a search warrant on the um, suspect's home, then find out he's in Madison. How did you draw that connection that, you know, figuring out that he's in Madison? We used, we have many options available to us to locate people. And I, I guess I would say it very simply as technology. Uh, you know, I think everybody's upset, and rightly so. Uh, this is Columbus. This is a small town. I grew up here. Uh, we all, to a degree, take it personally, because in smaller towns, you take your safety, you take the community for granted, and to a degree, you should. You should feel safe in your community. I don't think this incident lessens the um, level of security or comfort that people should have here in town. Uh, it's a, it's a hard call. I will tell you another thing that I'm very proud of the community of. Yesterday, during our officers' uh, long days, either on the parade route or at the crime scene, we were constantly complimented by the public about thank you for what you do, and we're sorry you're having to do this, and, and, and those types of comments. And that was extremely refreshing. I mean, we all know the environment of the last five or seven years of some degree of the public sentiment towards law enforcement. And I saw absolutely none of that yesterday. It was actually just the opposite. Uh, obviously, with extended days and when we're holding posts on crime scenes, you want to attend to your staff's basic needs. And we have people bringing us food, uh, w which is very important. I mean, it may, it, it may sound trivial, but it is very important to keep your people fed that are working 16, 18, 20-hour days and maybe can't leave a post. Uh, we had people bringing us food, asking us what they needed. Uh, it, it was just, I don't want to use the word wonderful because, again, we're here because somebody died. But it was just a very refreshing feeling all the way around of how this went. I mean, we essentially started, imagine a puzzle in a box. You've got a pile of pieces. As you slowly put each piece together, it slowly becomes an image. And then eventually you have the last piece in and you are done. And it, it was just, again, good old-fashioned police work. Uh, the public should be very proud of themselves for coming forward. I'm out on the uh, crime scene and I'm getting email with video links from citizens that saw the press releases of helpful video. Um, again, the suspect fled uh, down Dickinson Boulevard and uh, lives on Fuller Street. The search warrant was executed on, in a residence on Fuller Street. Go ahead. Our department has had contact with him, extremely limited and nothing notable. Okay, okay. Are you aware of the origin of the weapon involved? I am not. Uh, one thing that we do with all weapons, uh, obviously recovered in a case like this, is that uh, through the FBI, they have a program for law enforcement called E-Trace. And last night, I submitted an urgent E-Trace request for the entire origin of this firearm. And eventually, I would hope to have that back uh, within the next several days. It's not instant. It's not like you see on TV sometimes where you enter a serial number and boom, the record's right there. It is a very, um, it's a very complicated form you have to fill out. You just have to fill out the circumstances, the incident, who's involved, the case number. You've got to check all these things that you agree to this, you agree to that. So uh, I hope to have that answer soon, um, which will obviously, you know, help the case as well because we believe it was owned by the suspect, but we don't have that proof at the moment. Right yes. Right now, do you think that this is a targeted incident? We don't. We have cursory information that there was some sort of interaction between the two not so long before this. So I can't say that it was just a random, someone ran up to somebody and shot somebody. I, that I don't, th that I think would be in not a good representation of what happened. But to what scope that interaction was is still under review and I don't know if we will ever have that answer because like I stated earlier, one of them involved is deceased and the other is in custody. Any other questions? 
Do you have something to say? Okay. Mayor, Mayor Hill. I would just like to, on behalf of the city of Columbus, extend our heartfelt sympathy and prayers uh, to the family. Um, again, you know, these are these are uh, citizens of our community, uh, well known, well respected. Uh, when people heard who it was, I mean, it was it's, so it's obvious. There's a lot of caring, and that's you know, not that it doesn't happen in a big city, but that's small town atmosphere, and we care about everybody. We care about everybody in our community. But I would like to, to acknowledge in uh, uh, the uh, commitment and the uh, cooperation of all the local or all the law enforcement agencies coming together and, uh, and getting close to resolving this issue. It's been phenomenal and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's makes me good, it makes me feel good that we've got great people around us to help keep us protected and, and safe in our communities. So thank you very much. All right, if there aren't any other questions, I think I will conclude this. Thank you everyone for attending, the media as well as I see members of the public uh, that obviously have an interest and, and thank you for coming. And again, thank you for working with me yesterday. Uh, I, I think it went very well and uh, I was very, very proud of how it happened with specifically my media interactions were outstanding and, and this one as well.